how are all of you? Welcome to another episode of PPP. You see, I haven't made up my face. So this is another episode of PPP, the real me. Okay? <laughs> Random. <laughs> okay? So it seems like I love wearing red, no? It's not that one. It's not that I really love red. Red's not my favorite color, but um, you know, because color coded I'm adding the mint every week. So um, for today, the color code uh, would be red. Okay, what I mean is, every day, of course, we have to wear something, which is presentable and. Um, how am I gonna go about it without hurrying up, without being topsy turvy before my duty? What I do is I follow the color of the rainbow, which starts with the color red. So, what well, it means that, uh, say for example, I am starting the, the week on a Sunday, a week's duty on a Sunday. So, it means that on Sunday I'm gonna be wearing red something red okay so um and then obviously on monday it's gonna be an orange yeah something that looks like orange not necessarily pure orange but with the color of orange a dress or an apparel with the color of orange okay so I make the rainbow as a guide so that it would be easier for me to um, choose dresses in my wardrobe cabinet. Okay, so um, actually um, it should be paired with accessories and of course corresponding color of the shoes or footwear. Yeah, the, go well with the uh, apparel okay so i'm quite successful about it uh, i'm going to give you a tip about it in another vlog <laughs> not here not today okay i once had a vlog with fashion um, i think months ago but it's in my local dialect and i plan to transfer it to english with Tagalog so that everybody will understand okay so again for the uh, to explain further why I'm speaking in English uh, you see I have a lot of friends abroad and I also want to um, uh, explain to them what I mean in the simplest way that they could understand and uh, what more it should be in English <laughs> because English is a universal language and people back home in the Philippines um, most likely understand English um, yeah so it would be easier for me to uh, communicate with everyone rather than speaking in Tagalog and then speaking back translating back in English to my friends abroad or sometimes I uh, um, maybe I, I have a change of heart and then I am going to speak in Tagalog if I feel it. Okay, this is punto per punto and it means that I can do anything that I want, anything under the sun. I can speak whatever I want so long as it's legit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> if I feel that it is appropriate, how 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 um, how do I make sure that it's appropriate? Well, we're not allowed to uh, speak about um, illegal topics here. Obviously, it's the community. It's this is public, <clears throat> and this vlog and yeah, and this video is for public consumption. And um, as a civilized person one should um, carry out um, topics 
and the most respectful way and the most acceptable way to the public okay um yeah i know there are, uh in youtube there are even uh, videos which are labeled made for kids and if it is so it means that since the topics are out and you have got to carry the carry out the language in such a way that it is um, um, most appropriate to children okay so okay so for a look now uh, yeah I love it it's uh, this actual this piece actually bought uh, two years ago I think here from Matalan I think or h and I forgot you know there is a scarcity of sleeveless blouses here in Oman due to their um, dressing culture yeah but over the years I found out that a more uh, liberal kind of uh, dresses are being sold now in the different boutiques in the malls in Muscat and even um, across Oman but in an, but okay what i mean to say is if we buy it we must be responsible how to wear it it should be in a modern uh setting still yeah so i don't go out with this kind of look of course i have to have a cardigan over it or my coat my white coat okay anyway don't worry about it <laughs> okay so still I haven't trimmed down my body <clears throat> to a smaller size than before I mean I haven't gone back to my old size or to my old weight um, just have to wait <laughs> okay <laughs> okay this piece I bought in maybe in March or in April if we're going home to the Philippines because I was going to wear a red tinge or a red themed uh, blouse to uh, pair with this since, you know, I was home uh, f to attend uh, some, you know, political rallies of my very own favorite or a uh, uh, favorite candidate in the national elections in the past national elections and the theme color happened to be red so I had to buy a red trousers and uh, since I'm gonna, I'm gonna be out in public I also um, bought a not actually a red blouse but I, it's a white blouse long sleeve it's quite hot obviously yeah but i have to wear it under the sun so it has to be long sleeved uh, with a red um i think um burda <laughs> um uh, this is what you call a um it's not, it's not a cross stitch i forgot the prep that's being used there okay so it's it's the design is colored red okay a flower design okay so um we're gonna be we're gonna we talk about today well di pa lang. um as i've said ppp i can't think of anything i just say it anytime well uh, i think we're gonna be talking about adaptation of ofw in any anywhere not not necessarily in the middle east uh, anywhere in the world but okay since I am in the Middle East I can only speak for myself right okay so you know so I am looking at the camera I'm looking at the sprint about my blouse I mean I think it's pretty cool yeah <laughs> okay okay so uh, I'm ba ang aking ipukukwento Actually, uh, when I was there at work earlier, I was thinking I was reading a blog, a blog or vlog, yeah. Um, so um, I'm quite excited about it because I have not been 
blogging or vlogging for uh, quite some time, like in me, uh, maybe two weeks, something like that. Because I was so busy with a lot, lot, lot of responsibilities and activities all over here in Oman with my work and of course taking care of my family in the Philippines uh, even only virtually but you see I am managing everything in our home with regards to my par parents needs um, especially with their health yeah okay so uh, it's pretty kind of um, demanding for me and I became so stressed I mean okay I used to be a lot cheerful before but um, nowadays I admit I've become like um, harsh <laughs> yeah and only today I was glad that I um, reverted to a more controlled um, mood yeah uh, it's because i don't know i mean maybe it's god's grace really uh, i don't know when can i control myself and when can i let loose okay so um the fact is that um, there are a lot of problems piling up but i think um people we human beings are adjusted you're adjusted to what's happening in the environment to what's happening inside of us and in relation to other people we try to adapt we try to understand we try to look for ways and how to survive so um, there will be uh, changes in our moods and as well as our perspectives. Okay, so today I had a good change and um, I attribute it to, um, because I'm a prayerful person, I'm, I attribute it to God's grace and it's because I prayed fervently today for work. Um, okay, uh, it's not that I only pray today, I pray every day. Um, you know, sa lugar na to, people are praying five times in a day and then di ka makapag-pray parang, oh my God, it's a shame, right? So, uh, even once, uh, we have got to pray, okay? So, um... Uh, what I did was I prayed hard and then I have to trust the Lord and uh, that gave me a sense of a uh, quiet feeling okay and yeah calmness that's it yeah okay later on um, well okay I'm just gonna be sharing with you how I pray uh, because the topic here is about adjusting to um, the OFW life in uh, the Middle East, right? Okay, so one a factor that I used um, to uh, uh, effectively adapt to the life here in the Middle East is uh, praying, of course, praying. That's what the people here do. Obviously, we Christians pray and um, we pray in a different way obviously each of each of us of us has it has their own has his or her own way of praying but um the thought is that we all pray for something good to come to us yeah <laughs> whether we, uh, it whether uh, it will be with our families with our work and with our goals right okay so um for me i start a prayer uh, with um uh, thanks to the lord for giving me all of these things food shelter 
clothing, light, mm, protection from uh, diseases and trauma, accidents, and for all um, listening to my prayers. So it's, it's actually a guide, right? It's actually a guide that you can make. Um, and by this guide, you can think of how are you going to thank the Lord, what what things are you going to thank Him for, okay? Yeah, just be specific in mentioning if you have something to thank Him for, okay? And obviously, after that, I ask Him forgiveness for, for my sins, and uh, I always include my family and my the, family of my loved ones, uh, my loved one, my friends, to those people who have helped me a lot, I always include them with my, in my prayers, yeah, and whatever, whatever I pray for myself, I also pray for them, okay, and then, um, next, I, I start to ask again for God to, uh, bless me the same thing that he has been blessing me uh, yeah all of these years all of those times especially when I was uh, at the crossroads of my life and I was filled with challenges here yeah. I started to ask him again all the help that I could get from him uh, everything because you see I'm telling you, Lord, that I have no power and uh, I have no strength. I am completely um, uh, weaponless. Yeah, so I, I ask God to bring me uh, everything that I need to spend, to send His Spirit to help me in. Uh, in tackling all of these obstacles or challenges in my life, in my everyday um, um, dealings. Okay, so um, uh, so I've said uh, we could only ask the Lord for so much. Uh, we need all of His grace and all His help to carry out everything smoothly to control uh, the stresses that these problems bring us. Every day we got new problems. And you see, um, you'll be surprised that uh, one after another, um, the problems keep growing up and they just keep coming back or they just keep appearing, they disappear, but then they reappear, you see? I mean, my God, who's not tired about it? I mean, uh, who doesn't want um, release from all these uh, problems? You see, uh, most especially as I've told you, uh, when you're in the Middle East, uh, prayer is one thing that you can use to uh, survive here. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, when I came here, I wasn't really, um, I did not really fe feel, uh, feel homesick after some time. I mean, it's natural to feel homesick, um, homesickness, yeah, but, uh, in my case, I, I wasn't crying because I was used to uh, working um, far away from home back in the Philippines for almost eight years, yeah, before coming to Oman. And I'm used to uh, leaving my home and my family so that when I came here, uh, not much of crying, but only um, I became so focused and endured that I have to, um, be wary of everything, yeah, because I'm in a new place. So uh, that helped me a lot. That experience helped me a lot because, okay, 
as I told you, uh, and I was kind of used to it for eight years before I came to Oman. And uh, okay, that helped me adapt that kind of experience. So, and I'm going to now. Okay, so, I'm back. Okay, um, Yun yung ginamit ko, that was what I used to adapt here and start my uh, own new life here is in OFW, but still being a part of my family in the Philippines and still being the manager of our house and still obviously being the breadwinner of my family. Okay, so um, obviously I had lots, I brought uh, tons of confidence. Uh, I brought tons of um, courage, yeah, and strength, self motivation, yeah, like that. And uh, I was thinking of the things that I that became my reason to go here to uh, work and save money, like that. Okay, but eventually they change over time also. And, um, well. Uh, sometimes I succeeded, sometimes I failed, and this, it's a part of life. But you see, um, I could have done better if, um, well, OFWs don't tell each other a lot about um, um, experiences. I mean, some OFWs keep it to themselves, they keep those experiences to themselves, and not really tell. Because they are thinking, well, sooner or later, here, she's gonna discover all of these things here. And then everyone survives, right? So um, it feels like not a requirement to um, really tell. But obviously, everyone who is a newbie uh, uh, got to be uh, oriented and helped by the oldies to survive here and to just you know come by uh, with the everyday life here yeah and with the everyday norm here and in this place specifically here in the northeast it happens everywhere I know well anyways um so I told you um uh, there are a lot of things that uh, one can use to adapt to his or her environment, and one is it. You you brought lots and tons of, of <laughs> uh, core values with you. You have to start with it, obviously. Yeah, and bravery, bravery. Okay, that's number one, and uh, tons of trust in yourself. And trust in God. No, okay. Trust in God comes number one, and trust in yourself, and a strong feeling of um, um, accomplishing your dream or your goal, whatever that may be. Uh, it could be material. It could be um, uh, uh, emotional or psychological, right? So all of these things you gather together and um, make them your inspiration and your motivation to adapt to the life here in the Middle East, which uh, obviously uh, is kind of different, is kind of different with what we grew up, yeah? What we practice in the society, the norms here are very much different. It's like 360 degrees um, opposite from what we have known before, uh, most of them. Yeah, but good thing is that in this uh, country, there are a lot of expatriates also, which a uh, whom um, uh, doesn't share culture, and uh, obviously they are westernized or of Western culture and same as ours, and so that it could help a little bit uh, because it doesn't it does not alienate us from the rest of the world which is the world which is the Middle East yeah
it's a king for you and you, right? Okay. So anyways, um, I'm going to speak more about these things uh, later on.